Hi, kitty cats. More than 90% of transgender people lose friends or family after gender transition, and as many as 60% of marriages end in divorce after a partner transitions gender. Is it transphobic for friends and family not to support your gender transition, or is every response to gender transition valid, even up to divorce? In a previous video, which I've linked in the notes, I claimed relationships can survive gender transition as long as communication remains honest and open. In a comment, viewer I guess I have opinions asked, if a relationship does end after gender transition, is it always due to transphobia as opposed to sexual orientation or simply loss of romance? The comment notes, and I agree, this question is important because we don't ask it about people who accept being homosexual. But gender transition is seen as a choice, whereas sexual orientation is not. And given the statistics I quoted, as well as the growing public outrage at transgender people, is transphobia more acceptable and more justifiable than homophobia? To answer all of these questions, we need to understand the meaning of transphobia. The word transphobia implies fear or hate toward people who reject social norms of gender roles. That fear or hate can range anywhere from innocent misgendering over a drive through radio, to legislation to limit gender-affirming care, to actual physical violence against gender non-conforming people. But what exactly is there to fear in gender non-conformance? The fear clearly isn't of the behavior itself. A social norm, by definition, is behavior expected and accepted within the social environment. That is, we don't fear behavior such as growing long hair or applying makeup or wearing a dress. Those are expected feminine characteristics in Western society. Instead, the fear in transphobia is derived from who performs the behavior and the sex assigned to that person at birth. Out of context, the behavior itself is perfectly acceptable within the social environment. So the fear is of challenging social norms as a whole and challenging the social environment's authority to establish them. It's fear of an individual's agency, their right to govern themselves. In short, transphobia is not just fear of gender nonconforming people. It's fear of what happens in a social environment if social norms change. Of course, fearing change is common. People in the 1950s predicted the end of Western society in an Elvis Presley song. Now make no mistake, when that fear turns to violence, it's wrong. Always. But the fear isn't about behavior. It's about change in a social order. To return to the questions, what happens in a marriage when one partner transitions gender? Now, in a previous live stream, which I've linked in the notes below, I addressed how our identity changes as we experience life and respond to it. I concluded gender-affirming surgery would change the identity I expressed in my social environment. What I didn't address was how changes to my identity could affect other people. Relationships are two-way streets. Both people need to appreciate the other's identity. We choose our friends and romantic interests based on their identity. So is it wrong if a relationship falls apart because identity shifts from gender transition? Sadly, no. Your identity changed through gender transition. Your partner might not appreciate the new physical, cognitive, and behavioral characteristics you express. Your partner may want to leave you, and it may have nothing to do with fearing a change in social order. Now that's me speaking from my brain. Speaking from my heart, I wish every marriage could survive gender transition. I'd like to think the feelings we have for a romantic partner that inspire us to enter into marriage will supersede outward expression, and the relationship can simply evolve with the gender transition. My wife said my transition was no different than if I had been in a major car accident. Regardless of any disfigurement I suffered, I would still be the same person inside. Now I hope I look a little better after gender transition than I would after a major car accident. But the person my wife fell in love with 24 years ago is still there. She felt our relationship would not deteriorate. 
and it hasn't. It's strengthened. But observing my community shows how rare my relationship with my wife is. The majority of people I know who transition gender also negatively impacted their marriages in the process. I'd like to think that's unfair. I'd like to think marriage vows imply for richer or for poorer, in sickness or in health, wearing trousers or a dress, but sadly, no. I will reiterate, when fear turns into violence, that's wrong. Always. But losing interest in somebody because their identity changed is valid. The next question to ask is, can we blame somebody for changing their identity? The comment brought up that accepting your true sexual orientation after falsely expressing a different one in marriage carries less stigma than gender transition. Sexual orientation, as it said, is not a choice, but gender transition is. And while I will agree the act of transitioning gender is voluntary and certainly more complicated than, in, than accepting a sexual orientation, I contend we know our gender identity the same way we know our sexual orientation. Both are derived from the deepest motivations and desires that form the foundation of who we are. It's what I call the origin of identity. It may take work to effect a gender transition, but the need to do so is not a choice. When a transgender person marries before transitioning gender, it isn't because we hadn't chosen to become transgender yet. It's only because we haven't accepted we need to transition gender yet. And for that reason, I believe transgender people carry no blame for the end of relationship after transition. We were that same transgender person before you knew us, while we struggled against social expectations, and after we transitioned gender. The relationship was not built under false pretenses. We try to fulfill social expectations. That we fail to fulfill some people's expectations after transition comes as no surprise. Believe me, we're used to missing social expectations. We hope you will see how happy transition makes us, how comfortable we can be when allowed to be who we are. If, however, your expectations are more important to you than our happiness, we must part. It might hurt both of us at first, but when you truly experience life as the person you are, nothing can make you stop. Okay, now it's your turn. Have you had a relationship end because of gender transition? Do you feel transgender people deserve to be who we are? Tell me more in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out the videos I mentioned in this video that relationships can survive gender transition and identity will change with gender transition. You will find them linked in the notes below and in the cards on the screen right now. Then subscribe for more gender education from the human perspective. Talk soon. Bye.